I left some of my batteries unattended, and look what happened. They had a baby. <laughs> oh, seriously, look how cute it is. This is the Cyclone Bat 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate mini battery. And uh, it is substantially smaller than your standard Group 31 batteries. It says it has the same amount of power and uh, can do just as much as uh, its bigger siblings. But is it as good? We're gonna find out. Stick around. Let's unbox this. All right, we got some documentation. We got two different lengths of terminal bolts, which I like to see. And then here's the battery. I love this form factor. Look how tiny this is. Got uh, the nice little folding handles. Does have low temperature protection, so we'll be testing that. I always like it when they list the important specs right on the battery, so you've got them right there. So max charge voltage is 14.4 plus or minus 0.2 volts. You can uh, put them in series, up to four in series for 51.2 volt. Max charge current, 100 amps. Discharge current, 100 amps. Peak discharge for five seconds, 300 amps. And uh, low temperature charging protection at uh, 32 degrees. Comes with a nice uh, color manual here with uh, some nice information and uh, appreciate them adding these schematics so you can see different ways of connecting the batteries. So these pages here are very unique. I haven't seen this uh, from any other manufacturer, but uh, they provide guidance for the different ways you could uh, possibly install it. So this is the mini over here, and uh, then this is the standard 100 amp hour one, so we're gonna look at the mini. So not tilted on its side, not on the side with the terminals down, but you can do it on the side with the terminals up. Turn 90 degrees on end, and you can install it obviously sitting normally and even upside down. How long could this Cyclone Bat 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery run my full size kitchen refrigerator for? This is my main fridge and uh, we're getting in and out of it uh, every day for all three of our meals. So this is a great real world test. I also have the Victron Smart Shunt hooked up. We're going to do a capacity test at the same time. Now this is going to be less than a 0.2 C rate of discharge. So the numbers tend to get skewed to the lower end of the spectrum. But uh, again, this channel is all about real world tests. So this would be a scenario that uh, a lot of you could would be using a battery like this for. You can see here on the Victron Smart Shunt app, everything is zeroed out. In the middle of the battery and the fridge, we've got this power station. This is the Anchor Solix C1000. I need this for two reasons. The first one is I need an inverter to convert the DC power from that battery to AC for the fridge. And the second reason is I'm not usually right here the second the battery dies. Sometimes I'm multiples of hours behind uh, before I can check on it. So this just kind of helps see the fridge uh, through once that battery uh, dies. You can see the fridge here is plugged in. We've got the inverter on. So let's plug the battery in and uh, begin the test. All right, and it is 9.59 p.m. We'll be back in a few hours once this has died. All right, a couple hours later and uh, the fridge runtime test is complete. Now I'm a few hours late. It is 6.03 p.m. the next day, but uh, based on the logs in that power station, it uh, turned off just after four o'clock uh, this afternoon. So it uh, ran my full-size fridge for just over 16 hours. So if we pull up uh, the information from the smart shunt, we discharged a total of 98 amp hours, 1.3 kilowatt hours. So I'm classifying that as a pass. Again, that's a less than a 0.2 C rate. So anything above 95, uh, I'm happy with. This 3000 watt inverter is incredibly heavy. So for this next test, we're gonna use extension cords. The question is, can this Cyclone Bat 12 volt 100 amp hour mini battery power follow the extension cords? A 120 volt, 9,000 BTU mini split heat pump. Let's find out. It's obviously snowy outside, so we're gonna be running this on heat mode. There it goes. All right, let's run uh, back into the garage and look at the Victron Smart Shunt that I've got hooked up to the battery. And we'll see how much power this is pulling uh, because it pulls the most power right when it first uh, turns on. All right, we are back here in the garage. There's the uh, Smart Shunt right there. You look here, we're pulling just over 600 watts, about 49 amps out of the battery. Now this uh, battery is uh, pretty much fully charged. You can see down here, the shunt is estimating that we've got you know, just about two and a half hours of runtime available. Okay, can this Cyclone Bat 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery run? Follow the cord, household microwave. This pulls about 1800 watts, just shy of that, which translates to generally over hundred amps of discharge from the battery. We've got the smart shunt plugged in there so we can actually see what the draw is. That inverter can handle this microwave piece of cake. So the weak link will be the battery. All right, got the app here. Three, two, one. Yeah, look at that, 150 amps, 1872 watts. 152, see if we make it the full 30 seconds. Still pulling over 1800 watts, 153 amps 
from that battery. Okay, so good news and bad news on this cycling bat. Good news is it ran a full-size microwave piece of cake. And even at uh, 30 seconds sustain load of about 150 amps, it had no trouble whatsoever. Bad news is the tolerance for overcurrent protection on that is somewhat loose. Now 150 amps, it's not crazy over the 100 amps rated that this is. It's enough to start getting some things toasty if it runs for a prolonged period of time. So I would definitely recommend adding a separate fuse on this battery for overcurrent protection, just so you're covered. All right, can this 12 volt cycling ba battery power? Follow the cord? A full-size gas furnace. Now we are using this awesome EZ generator transfer switch to allow us to feed power into the furnace. I highly recommend a device like this for critical 120 volt loads like this you need to be able to run during a grid down situation. It's so easy. It's as easy as plugging a cord in and flipping a switch. I have a video about how I installed this that I'll link in the description below. It's the hot surface igniter. With that going, we're pulling 165 watts, 12 amps. We have ignition. Now that the hot surface igniter is off, you can see we're only pulling 100 watts, 105 watts, 8 amps from the battery. We still have the Victron Smart Shunt hooked up. That's how I'm getting these readings on the app. All right, the fan is fully up to speed. And uh, as you can see here, we're pulling just over 470 watts, 37 amps. And uh, it's estimating that uh, at that rate, we have just over three hours of time, and that's with 89% capacity. But that's assuming this furnace is running non-stop. Don't forget, furnaces usually turn on for a little while, and then turn off, and then turn on for a little while, and turn off. So in reality, you'd probably get much more longer run time than three hours on a furnace like this. All right, can this cycling bat 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery run? Follow the cord. A high-end desktop gaming PC workstation. We've got three 4K monitors with a 4K gaming benchmark running on that one. So we're really pushing this uh, computer to its limits. If we come down here, we are powering it through this Golden Mate UPS, which is a sweet lithium iron phosphate UPS. You guys may want to check that out. You can see nothing's plugged in right there. Getting the power from the battery right here. And as you can see, we're pulling just under 600 watts. If we pull up the Smart Shunt app, we can actually see we're pulling over 600 watts from the battery itself due to overhead uh, from the inverter and what have you. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, estimating that at this current uh, rate of discharge, we'd last just shy of two hours. So that's kind of a worst case scenario here because 4K gaming is very intensive and uh, my PC is overclocked and everything, so it's very power hungry. If uh, you weren't doing something as intense as this and just uh, doing you know, normal uh, computer stuff, word processing, web browsing, email, etc., uh, you'd be able to get a uh, substantially longer runtime off one of those 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries. Okay, again, the cycling bat 12 volt mini battery run. Full size household vacuum cleaner. Let's find out. You can see we're pulling about 1500 watts, uh, about 125 amp. All right, it's been doing this now for about 30 seconds and it uh, hasn't tripped off. So yeah, it can run a whole house vacuum cleaner, no problem. That also goes to show that this has great surge capacity, but also uh, a fairly loose overcurrent protection if it has any, because it did not shut this load down, which was exceeding its 100 amp continuous rating. Let's uh, do another high amp draw and uh, see what happens with this. Can this cycling bat 12 volt mini battery run an electric hot plate? Got the Victron Smart Shunt standing by here. Let's see what happens. So that's drawing over 1600 watts, 136 amps being taken out of that battery right now. All right, let's turn it off. So as we saw, this can easily handle heavy loads, the microwave, the vacuum, and this electric hot plate, and it shows no signs of tripping off on overcurrent protection. Of course, we did not push it beyond, you know, like 200 amps or something, but you shouldn't necessarily need to for high amperage testing like this. So good and bad news. Good news, it can run these heavy loads without any issues. Bad news is it does not have a very tight tolerance if it has any overcurrent protection. I would highly recommend uh, just putting an external fuse on it. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just an added layer of overcurrent protection, I think that would be wise with this particular unit. All right, everyone's favorite test. Can the cycling bat 12 volt mini battery power, follow the cord, a batch of wash. We've got uh, a load here in the washer and a load there in the dryer. And we'll see uh, if this battery is able to do it. Now, important note, this dryer is a gas dryer. You can see that uh, both of the 120 volt plugs are plugged in right here to this power strip. And uh, if we look back here, you can see that the 240 volt outlet is not in use. You might be able to see the gas line back there. You can also see that the, the 120 volt outlet is not being used at the moment. So this 
will only work with a gas dryer unless you have a 240 volt inverter. The dryer is also the hardest uh, to get going. It's not too bad once it's up and running, but uh, that initial surge that's required to get that drum tumbling is very, very heavy. If you can imagine trying to go to from zero to whatever speed that goes to with a load of heavy wet clothes inside makes it challenging. But let's see what we're able to do. All right, dryer starting in three, two, one. Uh, struggled a little bit, but uh, it started. And if we take a look at the Smart Shunt app, you can see it only uh, draws just under 400 watts to uh, run the dryer once it's up and running. So it's not that much power once it gets going. It's just that initial initial surge. Many a power station and even some batteries have been unable to start this. All right, let's uh, do a batch of wash. Starting that, three, two, one. All right, we'll be back uh, when this uh, washer is in uh, the spin cycle so we can see how much power it's drawing. All right, we're officially in spin mode. And uh, with both washer and dryer going, uh, you can see here we're pulling just over 500 watts from that battery, 40 amps. So it can handle both machines without a problem. With a fully charged battery, you could easily probably get two loads of wash done. Okay, the Cycling Bat 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery mini advertises that it has low temperature charging protection. Only one way to find out about that. Might be able to see some frost here on the top of the case. We've got the Victron Smart Shunt uh, hooked back up. And uh, what we're going to do is connect a battery charger to it. And we'll see if uh, it accepts any current. Now ignore that it says 100% state of charge. Uh, the battery is not at 100% state of charge. That's just uh, how the uh, Shunt app defaults when you first power it up. The battery is still allowing current to come out. Otherwise, the... Uh, shunt would not uh, be working and we would not be able to get connection. All right, let's uh, connect the positive to the positive, the negative to the shunt. Okay, the battery charger just uh, switched over to attempt to charge. Let's come here. You can see on the shunt app that there is no current running through it at all. The charger is continuing to try charging, but you can see the bars are filling up. So it uh, will eventually just get to the point where it'll go green and go to a state of standby when it is not able to push any kind of current uh, into what it's trying to charge. So yeah, no current uh, was accepted and uh, the charger has now gone into a standby state, no longer trying to charge. So, yep, the uh, low temperature charging protection on this uh, cycling bat uh, officially works. That's great to see. Let me show you my favorite feature of this battery, all right? That's just its size. I don't know if it's coming across on the camera, but uh, this thing is substantially smaller than a standard Group 31 battery like we've got right here. If I put this one in front of it so we can kind of compare. So this side is uh, basically lining up. You can see it is substantially less wide than the Group 31. And if I can get the uh, height uh, set of the camera, it's ever so slightly shorter as well. And then even uh, front to back depth, uh, there's uh, quite a difference uh, in that uh, aspect as well. So I love the fact that I get the same capacity in this battery as I do in, from a battery this size, and yet it takes up significantly less space. That's very good, especially in my uh, configuration where I use these batteries mostly for like home backup situations and stuff like that. Space is a premium, and so to squeeze out uh, more inches of storage space and still get the same amount of uh, capacity, that's a big deal for me. So how does this Cycling Bat 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery stack up against the competition? I'll have a link down in the description to the spreadsheet uh, that you're looking at right now where I rate it on a point system and uh, you can see how it ranks compared to all the other batteries I've tested so far on the channel. I'll also leave a link uh, for the battery in the description as well in case you want to check it out further or pick one up yourselves. I always say the smartest people are in my comments section. I love hearing from you. I try to read and respond to all of your comments. So please leave some down below on what you guys think of this mini form factor as well as uh, any thoughts on the testing you saw on this particular one, the, the Cycling Bat. If you can't tell, I'm very thorough and detailed when it comes to these videos and they take a long time to make. So the only compensation I ask for from you guys is a comment, a like, a subscribe, and consider sharing with your friends. 100% free to you makes a world of difference for the channel. You guys are awesome. I sure appreciate you. And thanks for spending uh, some of your precious time with me. We'll catch y'all next time.